fair deal at the supermarket checkout. Since May, when the government announced its formal response to the Commerce Commission's market study, we've moved swiftly and decisively to increase competition in the retail grocery sector. There's no easy fix for the cost of living, but we're taking a range of actions to ease the pressure on families and also to tackle some of the drivers of the cost of living increases. Our work to increase competition in the grocery sector is a key part of this. In June, we passed legislation to outlaw the use of restricted, restrictive covenants and exclusive leases by supermarkets. This will put an end to a practice which meant the duopoly could block competitors from opening up shop in certain suburbs and shopping centres. This makes sense because limiting the supermarket options on offer for consumers severely restricts their ability to shop around for a better range of products and, of course, a better price. Then in July, we announced the establishment of a grocery commissioner role to sit within the Commerce Commission. This new industry watchdog will act as a referee for the sector. It will tell us when it suspects there is a problem. The commissioner will keep a close eye on how government's reforms for the sector are being implemented and provide annual state of competition reviews. They will be able to take action and issue substantial fines where necessary. The legislation to implement this role is expected to be introduced to the House later in the year. Parallel to this, consultation for both the mandatory code of conduct and unique pricing regime has now closed and work is underway to finalise the finished product. Which brings us to today's announcement. Today we can announce that government has finalised its measures to unlock the stockroom doors of supermarkets. If the duopoly can't show evidence, it has brokered good faith wholesale deals with competitors. Alongside the retail stores, supermarkets have wholesale arms. We have called on the duopoly to open these up to would-be competitors at a fair price. We've said if this does not happen, a regulatory backstop will be triggered. To walk you through that, I'll ask Minister Clark to share with you additional details. Kia ora everyone and thank you Prime Minister. Um, as was just canvassed, alongside the retail stores that supermarkets run, uh, we're talking foodstuffs and Woolworths here, they have wholesale arms. Government has called on the duopoly to open these up to would-be competitors at a fair price. We see this as a centrepiece of the government's response to addressing competition shortfalls in the grocery sector. And why is that? Well, put simply, if there is no proper access to wholesale goods, there is no incentive for competition to enter the market. We need to address wholesale access because you cannot run a supermarket on empty shelves. We've been clear the grocery sector needs to change so that competing retailers, whether they are independent dairies, smaller chains or a new entrant, can offer a wider range of products at competitive prices. This work will improve competition and competition will improve prices. Imagine, uh, if you will, being able to do an affordable shop at the local dairy or corner store. I've been very forward in my comments that I expect major grocery retailers to develop wholesale offerings that include a comprehensive range of products at a fair price. And to the duopoly's credit, I acknowledge there has been some progress in this area. But today, uh, I can announce government is creating a toolkit of additional regulatory powers for the grocery commissioner and the government to draw on if these wholesale arrangements do not meet the threshold of expectation. These powers will allow the Commissioner to improve transparency and conduct of the major grocery retailers by putting in place a Grocery Wholesale Industry Participation Code or requiring major retailers to establish a framework for range and price. We are also including new powers for government to step in and demand retailers provide wholesale supply at certain times, including price and range. However, there's nothing uh, needless to say, to stop supermarkets acting to open access today. They've said they're going to do it, and this legislation proceeds with that understanding. In fact, uh, as I've said before, supermarkets would be well advised to lock in good faith wholesale arrangements on their own terms, since otherwise government will have no problem stepping in to do it for them. We will see a more competitive grocery industry one way or another.
open to questions. Thank you, Minister Clark. I'll now open the floor for questions. Uh, Minister, what progress has there been to date on this issue from supermarkets opening up their, their wholesale arms? Well, obviously, um, there are commercial elements at play here, but I am aware that the uh, duopoly have um, had uh, expression of interest processes. Um, uh, they have uh, indicated to me that they've had quite some interest in those, um, and you know I've gathered from conversations that some of those pro those conversations are progressing. But of course, they're commercial negotiations. So just to clarify, they've gone out and, and to, to smaller competitors and said, "Would you be interested in, in buying our wholesale goods?" That is correct. Where are you going to get the information from that will enable you to? measure whether or not the prices that they're charging are unreasonable? Well, the, the Commerce Commission uh, will have monitoring powers. There'll be increased transparency uh, around the way that the uh, sector is working. Um, in the quasi uh, well, let me, let me stick with that point. Um, and then the, the Commerce Commission, of course, has the, um, the economic regulatory uh, experience um, to ascertain uh, whether fair prices uh, are being provided in the market. Ultimately, we're focused here on what steps are necessary to encourage a, a comp competitive uh, response uh, in the marketplace. And the quasi-regulatory regime uh, brings into play uh, transparency and conduct obligations, the obligation to consider uh, deals in good faith that are brought to them. And then there are steps beyond that. They could uh, stipulate in the regulatory backstop regime that a framework for range and price be put in place, akin to uh, what Fonterra's um, Farmgate milk price manual does, uh, if you want an analogy. But what I'd come back to is that Kiwis know um, that they're facing high prices for groceries. Um, the supermarkets have acknowledged um, that it's time to open up their wholesale arms, and they are seeking to do commercial deals. And that's what we expect to happen. It's worth keeping in mind the Commerce for Commission and a market study were able to establish that a million dollars a day over and above what could be considered fair and reasonable was being taken out of the pockets of consumers in New Zealand. We've got to make sure they therefore have the tools to establish, should they need it, uh, what would be considered um, fair and reasonable in a competitive market. But they've been notoriously secretive, yes. possibly even deceptive at times about the information that they uh, release. Will the Commerce Commission or the Commissioner have the power to order them to open their books? Yes, that is one of the tools in their toolkit, should they need it. Mm -hmm. I'll come here. Minister, can you just lay out the collection just in basic terms what this changes for, say, a corner store owner and, and how, how things become cheaper sort of through the pipeline? Well, uh, what this does, um, having a, a regime where um, the corner stores and other smaller competitors in the market can access wholesale goods means that they can stock goods on their shelves uh, at competitive prices and they can also supply the range uh, of goods that customers might expect when they walk into a shop. Um, We've seen uh, the, the market be less competitive than it was, I, I can remember when I was a kid, uh, going to the local dairy and expecting to buy a lettuce and a tomato and um, not pay the earth for those things. Over time, the offerings in those, in those um, smaller uh, shops has diminished, and that's because they really struggle to get a fair price and a wide range of goods. Opening up wholesale changes the game. And there's, there's two things ultimately want, we want to see. You, you know, most consumers know that when they've got choices uh, and you've got a well-functioning competitive environment, that benefits consumers. We've seen a narrowing of offerings. Uh, and so it's not just about making sure that, for instance, your corner dairy is able to access um, products uh, through a, a wholesaler that's offering fair pricing rather than them just going to the supermarket themselves, which is what many do. We also want more larger operators in the market as well because of what that will likely provide. That won't happen unless they can access the products to stock their shelves. Um, the, 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 the Commerce Commission looked at this reform and uh, carefully and appeared to conclude that it could add significant costs into the sector. Uh, they said it could reduce price competition, mm. it could entrench countdown and foodstuffs market share. Were they right to have those concerns? Look, this is, this is something that we've carefully considered, and one of the uh, factors that will be completely permitted in this is for suppliers to uh, not enter into that wholesale uh, regime. If suppliers choose to go directly to other um, would-be competitors in the market, um, they can do that. They won't be locked into this wholesale regime uh, as it stands, and that, that introduces additional competition in the market, which I think is a good thing. You had a follow-up. So, uh, 
you, uh, David, you described this as uh, the centrepiece of your reforms, I think. Does that mean that you've concluded not to move to the potential ne next step of, of ordering uh, divestments? Of um, I, I was very careful to describe it hopefully, as a centrepiece. Um, uh, look, we, we haven't completed the work on divestment yet. Nothing to announce about that um, today. Um, I think the Commerce Commission highlighted that you need to work through very carefully the costs and benefits of going down that route, and as government, that's what we're doing. And also prioritising those areas where we've had feedback around what would make the biggest difference uh, to this market, and, and wholesale access is one of the things that has been raised with us consistently. Minister, um, does this regime ensure that other uh, retailers are given the, the same price wholesale as uh, Pack and Save and New World and um, Countdown actually get? Because the phrase used is fair price, because mm. you, could, you could see the um, chains offer much better deals to their own chains than... Mm. What, what's laid out um, in the detail is that the Commerce Commission is provided with a toolbox of, of different measures it could choose to use. Um, one of those would be supply at non-discriminatory terms, which is essentially what you're, you're suggesting. Um, they could go to price quality regulation, uh, should they choose. But actually they've got a range of other measures that start with transparency obligations um, and um, you know the framework uh, for range and price that's, that's more akin to the, the Farmgate uh, milk price uh, manual. So there's, there's a range of options they could choose to deploy and ultimately I think um, they'll think carefully about which one is going to encourage uh, competition should we not see those commercial deals being reached and I, I come back to I fully expect uh, commercial deals to be reached because um, the, the supermarkets will be wanting uh, to do that um, and I think um, those who want to expand in the market are keen to get on with it too. How do you ensure that um, Pack and Save, for example, which has lots of direct relationships with suppliers, mm. don't ensure that for the main products with the big volumes, it doesn't actually go through a wholesaler, they get the best deals direct? Mm. Yeah, so, so suppliers will be able to go direct to anybody? Um, and suppliers have a fair amount of say in, in the regime, in, in, including across the options that are being presented. How are negotiations going with other potential retailers to enter the market? Um, look, there, there are um, ongoing conversations. I'm aware of interest. A lot of that has um, commercial, as you'll understand, and confidence um, written all over it. Um, but we've seen public comments from the likes of, of the warehouse um, that they're, they're interested in seeing what the opportunity is here. Um, we've seen um, uh, the likes of Night and Day and Circle K have uh, plans they'd like to expand in the market as some of the smaller players. Um, and, and I know from the expression of interest uh, process, one of the one of the um, supermarkets has confided in me that they've had a wide range of uh, folk requesting um, interest about access to wholesale. So um, time will tell where those deals uh, end up uh, falling, but there is certainly interest out there. Prime mm. Minister, so you referred to um, in the PR that the $1 million a day in excess profits due to a, a lack of competition. Given you know, incredible profits that a lot of companies are posting at the moment, do, do you consider there are other sectors that Kiwi is getting ripped off? This is a primary focus for us because when you, you know, when you hear from New Zealanders about the areas where they are noticing, and they notice it relative to others as well, you know, uh, who hasn't heard a Kiwi who in recent times has uh, travelled across the ditch and said, why is it that in Australia, within their market, you can see such a significant price differential in the in the supermarkets to what you'd receive those same those same products in New Zealand? And so we've squarely set our sights on this area because we know that this is where a large amount of Kiwis spend their money putting food on the table, and even as inflation comes away, we will still have systemic problems in our grocery sector. We have to resolve those issues. Um, how far will yeah, this well. measure go in addressing those systemic problems in competition that PM mentioned? Well, we, we see this as a critical building block in that in that whole um, challenge to those systemic issues. You cannot uh, stock a, a retail offering without access to wholesale. If you're a new competitor in the market, you simply can't compete if you can't get access to wholesale. So no matter where we went, for example, uh, with divestment, if we decided to go down that path, you'd still need wholesale access. This is one of the absolutely critical building blocks in any response to make sure that we have a structurally competitive market into the future. Many uh, New Zealanders uh 
you know, our age and above will remember a grocery um, uh, sector that looks a little different than it does now. It has changed over the years, and we have now essentially a duopoly operating uh, in New Zealand, and we believe, uh, as the Commerce Commission showed, uh, that that is having an impact, a million dollars a day uh, uh, in uh, additional profit that you would otherwise expect in a competitive environment uh, that we would not be, be seeing. So that is, that is fundamentally what this is all about uh, trying to address. How soon do you expect all this to be up and running, this regime, basically? When do you think New Zealanders will see that impact at the checkout? Mm. Yeah, um, good question. So um, I want to have a bill in the House this year and uh, I want to have a, a full select committee process across it so that we actually have good scrutiny of this. We want it to be working and we want, you know, we want the duopoly to have their say uh, about how this will function. We want new competitors into the market to have their say. We want the public to have their say so that we make sure we absolutely get this uh, in the place where it's going to work best for consumers. Um, then there are various triggers um, that will be outlined for when the Commerce Commission might intervene further uh, beyond just requiring good faith. Um, and uh, timely response to any requests. Um, and, and so a series of steps are outlined whereby the Commerce Commission could choose to intervene and put further regulatory tools in place. Um, or at any stage, if the Commerce Commission was not satisfied that progress towards workable competition was being made, um, as you'd expect, it can choose to intervene and put uh, regulatory tools in place. But there are steps laid out that I would expect the duopoly to be following. We are fairly, we are fairly confident that even though we have a full legislative process to come, that we will see change before these rules take effect. Mm. And that's because uh, if the grocery sector wants to ensure that they're able to do things on their terms, they need to make change now themselves. Otherwise, these regulatory measures are available for the Commerce Commission to use. Uh, and so we have, we have confidence that that change will happen even while we're going through this process, and that will benefit consumers. Minister, could you yeah. please explain exactly what those regulatory tools are? Yeah, so I've, I've covered them abroad, but I'll, I'll, I'll kind of outline them again. So first off, we've got the, the quasi-regulatory regime where um, major grocery retailers are required to consider all, re all requests in good faith, uh, along with the outcome of any requests. Sorry, then, then, sorry, then they're required to notify the Commissioner um, of the outcome of any of those requests. Um, they're required to put in place formalised rules, criteria and procedures for considering requests for wholesale supply, uh, put in place standardised terms and conditions for wholesale supply or principles, um, provide a copy of their standardised terms and conditions to the Commissioner and to any person who requests. So that's, that's, the, that's the first thing that, that's kind of in place. That will uh, make sure that there is a, a way of relating to people who come in and to make sure that that's done in good faith. Then there are a series of other um, steps that the grocery uh, commissioner can roll out or trigger, or the government can trigger in some cases, um, that go to uh, what I would describe as kind of bolder regulatory tools, things like uh, the framework for range and price, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, akin to Fonterra's Farmgate Milk Price Manual, um, things like supply at non-discriminatory terms or um, a form of price quality regulation. Now, all of those things are for the commissioner to judge uh, according to the progress that's being made. But ultimately, uh, as the Prime Minister has said, I anticipate uh, very clearly that the uh, wholesale arms of those businesses will reach deals with other competitors in the marketplace because it's in everybody's interest to get on with that. I believe the, there's a handy one page yes, that we've we released be. in your packs that summarise the range of tools. Yep. Uh, Thank you. Just when yeah. will I'll Kiwis... I'll, 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 come, I'll come quickly to you, Audrey, and then I'll come to you at the back. Are yeah. you ultimately saying that the regulator, the grocery commissioner, mm -hmm. will be able to fix the price of bread, butter and baked beans? Well, look, look there's, a, there's a wide range of things um, they could do. Ultimately, price quality regulation involves things like you can set margins and require a certain range of products um, to be set out. But that's, I think, a, a fair way down the track, and I don't think we'll see that, but that'll be a judgment for the Commerce Commissioner. Mm. When will we actually the, start? La, last one, Audrey, and then. When will the Commissioner be in place? So the Grocery Commission, we have um, an arrangement now where the existing Commerce Commission is... Um, filling that role. We've, we've written and requested that they do. Um, the legislation will empower the appointment of a permanent grocery commissioner, and as soon as the legislation's passed, we will recruit for that position and we'll obviously be looking for the right person. Yes. When will we actually start seeing grocery prices go down for, say, you know, your local dairy? Well, I think... You, sorry, Prime Minister. No, the, 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 um, you know, increasing competition 
um, improves prices. We know that from you know every every competition uh, study around the world. Um, what you can see already is changes in the behaviour of the duopoly. So we've seen um, them welcome uh, the removal of covenants. We've seen them uh, welcome a code of conduct, a grocery commissioner, and we've seen them do price rollbacks and price freezes already. So we've already seen a change. But what I'd stress about that is that that is for now while the spotlight's on them, and what we're wanting to do is change the structure so that we see that competition continue into the future so that we do get those quality uh, prices that we would expect. Yeah, we've been clear that following the Commerce Commission's report, that clearly showed that New Zealanders were paying the price for the lack of competition in the market. Since that time, uh, we have seen change. Our view is that change needs to continue. Uh, it needs to, um, in particular, allow new entrants and support new entrants into the market through access to products. Uh, and that's been one of the limitations today. So we believe that by taking these next steps, we will continue to see the grocery sector alter the way it operates, and that will be good for all Kiwis. So when you say that the government will step in, what does it actually look like and is that not interfering in private businesses? Do they not have the right supermarkets to you know, stop their own groceries in comparison to other supermarkets? Well, look, have that point of difference? I, th I think um, every New Zealander knows what that million dollars a day coming out of their pockets um, feels like and that, and that, you know, I've said this before, that's their most conservative estimate of the Commerce Commission, a million dollars a day in excess profits beyond what you'd reasonably expect. So we've got a, we've got a problem, we've got one of the most constant concentrated uh, markets in the world for the grocery sector, and we need to have the tools that address that. As I said before, I do not expect it to be very likely that we'll end up triggering many of these tools, because the incentives are on all of the people involved to sort this out sooner rather than later to make sure there is fair access to wholesale goods for new competitors or competitors that are already in the market wanting to expand. Yeah. Minister, um, do, do you have a, any advice on, on what this might do to prices uh, and how much benefit might go to consumers and to well, suppliers? Look, I mean Obviously, we know that there are prices that are being charged uh, currently that are producing that excess profit. We know increased competition improves prices. So can I say... Um, which particular products will get cheaper at what time frame? No, I can't. I, you know, the price freezes and the uh, and the price rollbacks we've seen have shown that already some of those prices have come back. But picking individual ones, um, that's not what you'd expect of a cabinet minister. That'll be down to um, the the commissioner to actually look at if we get to price quality regulation, what that looks like. Um, but look, I would say overall, we're increasing competition. Competition will reduce prices. So is there no analysis in the regulatory impact statement about the potential benefits and the costs? <coughs> the potential Regula regulatory impact. Yeah, I just missed the last bit after that. Potential benefits and costs. costs. Oh, yeah, um, of course, um, very long and detailed um, analysis, as you'd expect. Um, trying to make sure that we have uh, hit the sweet spot here to make. Uh, look, you, you cannot um, get down to the detail of individual products. That's not mm. uh, what we'd expect uh, to happen. But we would look uh, at the nature of the market, the concentration of the market, and um, what we see overseas as an effect when you have a more competitive market. Yeah. Um, I'll come here in the front for the last question on this matter, and then I understand that there would be some interest in other questions, so I'll then open up more generally. We, we learned today that uh, Meridian, uh, Mercury Energy and Genesis made a combined net profit of $5 million a day in the year to June. These are 51 per cent state-owned companies. Wouldn't tackling that be an easier fix? Oh, look. Well, uh, look, here I would say that any New Zealander who has seen the recent market studies that have gone on in this sector, uh, I don't think would make a judgment that the government should step back from this work. Uh, fair prices for food is critical. And so this is where we have focused our attention. We've also focused it on fuel. Those those expenses that New Zealanders can't avoid. And I think that's that's rightly where we should be looking. The last the last thing I'll Does that show you though that you're conflicted? You own fifty one percent of companies that potentially have just doubled their profit. No, it just shows that this has been a priority for us. Uh, look, just to conclude, we will be, of course, having a, f a four month select committee on this piece of work because there is, there is real complexity here. Um, but if uh, today's announcements is a demonstration of anything, it is how difficult we as a government found it to swallow the Commerce Commission's report that a million dollars a day in excess profit was being taken directly out of Kiwi's pockets. We could not accept that. And that is why we have taken these steps. And 
are a demonstration that we absolutely have the backs of New Zealand consumers. Um, okay, I'll move up to open to questions. Yeah, yeah Jessica. Just, oh, and then Janae. Oh, can I just ask a couple of questions about uh, Trevor Mallard? Why sure. do you think he's best placed and best qualified to represent New Zealand in Ireland? Look, you know, three out of five of our last speakers have gone on from what is an incredibly important role um, in uh, New Zealand politics into uh, roles that have uh, included then uh, diplomacy and representing New Zealand abroad. You know, Trevor Mallard has had a, a more than 30-year career in politics. You don't spend that amount of time in this place without having a huge depth of understanding around New Zealand's priorities, um, our relationships, uh, and how to further strengthen those in markets that are really important to us. Is he the MP that's caused you the most headaches over the years as Prime Minister? No, in fact, you know, here I would say that every single speaker I have ever observed ha has always um, uh, caught the ire of opposition parties. There's been no speaker that I think is, has ever given their job as to referee Parliament who has been without critique. Uh, I often think some of that critique has dipped into being uh, overly politicised. He's done a hard job on behalf of all of us, and I know he'll continue to work hard on our behalf in Ireland. On the Gaurav Sharma issue, have you spoken to any of your MPs to communicate with them about their messages and their communication with him over the last two weeks? About their messages and communication yeah, with so him? Yeah, so he's obviously released a, a lot of, t um, you know, he said he's released texts and uh, that transcript that he sent to News Hub. Look, Have you discussed those I think, with him? I think everyone would make their own judgment as to whether or not communication uh, is something that would be have kept in confidence from their old colleague. But I have no doubt that many colleagues who had grave concerns for him during the past 12 days will have reached out, um, and that would not be of surprise to me. We're a very collegial team. Yeah, Isabel. Um, just on, like, back on the departing speaker, how mm. will you remember Trevor Mallard? time in Parliament. Do you know, I think one of the things that hasn't had much um, reflection is the changes he's made to try and make this a, a, a better workplace. Uh, and not just a workplace where uh, it being very political, uh, that uh, we look after people, um, but actually more family friendly. We want Parliament to reflect New Zealand. It means that we want people in different stages of life. And many of them will have dependents, and he has created an environment where it's easier um, to be a caregiver or a parent in this place. And that will make a long-term difference for generations to come. And you what been changes, sorry, what changes, no, I'll let you finish there and then. What, what changes will Adrian bring to the role? Uh, Adrian uh, is a person who somehow has managed to bring that impossible balance uh, between uh, being um, uh, both uh, allowing the, the to and fro of Parliament whilst at the, t at the same time taking a very firm hand when he chooses to intervene. Uh, he holds and brings great um, mana to the role and I think he's very well respected and well regarded. He will leave his own mark on this place and I think in a really positive way. Adrian said that he will be bringing in tikanga Māori a sense of manaakitanga and rongomo, a peace and a quality yeah. that comes with him as a ratana mm. member. Mm. And, and I think we've already seen that in the way that he works in this place. I've seen that, um, having worked with him as a colleague. Uh, he is um, firm but fair, um, uh, uh, often uh, soft but hard. How do you do all of that in one person? He manages to balance that. He's an extraordinary person I think is, is perfect for this role. Can I just ask back on um, supermarkets, that timeline, if so a bill will be drafted um, perhaps by the end of the year, then there will be a four month select committee process, then there could be a period of time before it actually takes effect, is that right? So it could be... Uh, no, uh, well um, I anticipate that that will take effect um, as soon as the bill come, you know, the bill come into force by after it's passed. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister, oh, do you hope um, oh, yeah. Adrian Rudolfi will give you less of a headache than Trevor Mallard? I, I wouldn't categorise any speaker in that way. It's not an easy job, and at any given time you'll have issues that you don't anticipate being thrown up. Uh, and so um, you're not going to hear me uh, in, when someone has such a difficult job um, passing, in hindsight, all of that judgement. I'd rather just thank him for his service. Prime Minister, do you expect Trevor to remain in Parliament 
And what are you going to? How I'll, are you going to put him to use? I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave him for. I'll leave that for him to speak in a little more detail around his um, around his departure timeline. Um, but as we've already outlined, he's expected to take up the post in, in January of, of next year. Um, there's always, however, for any diplomatic posting, a period, a, a reasonably long period of induction as well. Prime Minister, ben, I'll finish with you. The uh, morality police seem to be out in force for the Finnish Prime Minister, Sanna Marin, and I wondered if you had any reflections on the double standards that female politicians are faced with compared to their male ca- counterparts and the behaviours they expected to conform to. Yeah, so as you know, I tend, tend not to, to jump into the domestic political political situations of any other um, of any other uh, uh, leader or country. Um, but my one general reflection is that ever since I've been in this role, I've really had a mind to uh, whether or not we are attracting people to these jobs. Um, we need people from all walks of life to look to politics and think that's a place I feel I can make a positive difference. Uh, and so that's one of my reflections. Uh, how do we constantly uh, make sure that we attract people to politics rather than perhaps has been historically the case? Put them off. Thanks, everyone.